hey, we all know that we got to hit down on the ball to make it go up. Today we're going to talk about compression and angle of attack in the single plane swing. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Hey, welcome to the channel today. You know, it's been a while since I've done a video for you guys, and one of the things that I wanted to kind of talk to you about today is stuff that I've been working on in my own swing. I always like to kind of bring that to the channel a little bit. Um, but one thing that's really helped me lately, and I've been hitting the ball really well, I uh, haven't played a ton of golf, which means that when I hit it well and I haven't played much, I've been doing the right things in the time that I have had to work on my swing. And one of the things I've been working on is compressing the ball and angle of approach. I want to talk about that today. I think it's really going to help you get a good feel for how the single plane swing produces energy into the ball. And not enough people talk about compressing the golf ball. And how do you do that with a single plane swing? One of the things that you also hear in this video is how a seven iron swing can be the same as a driver swing. Both those swings are the same, but because of a few variables that we change, the hands compress the ball a little bit differently. So let's just talk about what compression really is. Um, those of you who, who follow the single plane swing or are into the single plane swing, you know that we have, we already set the club. If you look at how I'm addressing the golf ball here, we already set the club head beneath my nose and the hands are always in front. So even though they're not in front of the golf ball quite yet, they will be at impact. So the key to compressing a golf ball is having the hands lead into impact. Now, why is that important? Well, when the hands lead, see the club makes an, a downward angle, as opposed to if the hands somewhat get behind the golf ball, you see how the club is making an upward motion through the ball if I do this, whereas if my hands lead, the club is then coming down and then can compress the ball. Compression is where you squish the golf ball and then it stays on the face and then, and then re, 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 rebounds off the face, giving it spin, loft, energy. So in effect, you're hitting down on the ball, compressing it to get it to go up. Now, this is what's missing in a lot of swings because many times we think, well, we got to scoop the ball in the air or hit up on it or whatever. And ball position plays a significant factor in this. Ball position meaning where I place the ball relative to my lead shoulder. See how my lead shoulder right now is in front of the ball? And then if I had the ball more forward in my stance, you can see that the, the ball is more in front of my shoulder. So it's either the ball is back of my shoulder or in front of my shoulder. So you can see how ball position can also play a part in this. So let's just talk about what I've been working on and what's really helping me get some compression out of the golf ball is hitting more down on it. So what I've done is I put together a little training aid for myself. Now this is really the same thing as my single plane trainer. You've seen me use that long trainer where I have the grip on it and I have the extended club and I can work on, the, on keeping the club lead sided. One of the things that I always recommend is that the golf swing is very lead sided. In other words, it's always referencing the lead side of your body. Why do I want it lead sided? Because that's how the hands lead and the club compresses. So all I did was to take that same concept of my single plane trainer and take this alignment stick and put it into my training club. And now what you get is the same alignment of the club in the arm, but it's keeping it on the lead side. Now, if you do this, if you decide to go practice this, be very careful because I am not swinging full swings. I'm not trying to hit the ball 180 yards with my six iron. I'm just knocking shots out there. My entire goal of this is to hit get my hands more to my lead side. So watch what I do first as I go through this. I'm going to kind of just rehearse how the hands are leading and then I'm going to compress the ball with that feeling and I see how the club comes down. And the reason you're getting that compression is because the hands are leading and you're getting that final downward action of the hands at impact. And notice how the hands are again on the lead side of my body. Now here's what's really interesting about this drill a little bit is body position matters because watch this if I lean back too far see how I can't get down to the ball I can't compress so again a downward motion a compression and again that ball that went a little further maybe went about 100 yards there it's really helping me feel 
And, and here, here's what I found is the more I did this, the more it helped my backswing. I know it sounds kind of weird, but what happened was it got a more direct approach to my backswing. So it started really helping me get back and then down because of course, where you come to an impact has a lot to do with where you, where you have the club coming down in the downswing. So here we go again, single plane trainer, extension to the lead side, taking the club, just part way back. And it feels like I'm making a very downward approach to the golf ball there and hitting down. All the fundamentals are right there. Now, let's grab my seven iron. Same exact setup. You're going to see the same angles that it's set up. You're going to see the same position to my lead side. Now I'm just going to go ahead and release the club with the same exact feeling. And it really helps me get the feeling of the hands leading to the lead side. So one of the things with Mo, right? Mo would talk about leading and lagging with the hands. Well, Lag is one of those things that people try to create by holding on to this angle. I don't believe you need to do that at all. Matter of fact, I'm actually opposed to you thinking you've got to hold this angle coming down to get compression out of the ball. It's actually op opposite of that. In, in, in other words, as long as your hands lead, you'll compress. And Mo had, you know, his hands were great. He had the best hands in golf, according to Sam Sneed, where the hands would get to his lead side which is why that sound of that golf ball was so great with Mo. And it was because of his mechanics. It wasn't because he was trying to do it. He set up with the correct relationship of the hands already leading. And when he came down, he was in a position where his hands were always leading and he had this angle of approach. And there's that sound of that golf ball that he had where he just compressed it. Now let's do the same thing with the driver. Now the difference with the driver is that the hands are leading the same way it did with the seven iron, except I've changed a variable here. The variable that I've changed is really getting the ball more forward. I have it here inside my lead foot and then a wider stance. Now what you see is the exact same mechanics. You see the hands leading, however, they unhinge, when they unhinge at impact, they're in a more forward position. They're not back here with the seven iron compressing, they're more forward launching it up, but they're still leading, so you still get compression. So again, here's a driver wider stance, hands still leading, same mechanics. I get asked that a lot, is a seven iron the same as a driver? It's exact same mechanics. My setup has changed because I'm wider, ball's more forward, and then the driver, exact same swing. And again, same sound, same compression, but because the ball's forward, it compresses more forward than being back. And that's really what happens between driver and seven iron. That's why the swing's exactly the same but you gotta get the variables correct with ball position, stance width, and obviously it's on a tee. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Don't forget, subscribe, hit the bell icon, give me a thumbs up if you like this video.